many happy people do we have here this morning? Wave your hand like this if you're happy. How many people here are healthy and happy? Glory to God. Amen. Uh, I don't know if y'all had heard, there's been a couple mentions of it this morning, but there's a virus that's going around, just in case you hadn't heard that. Uh, some of you, you may not keep up with the uh, current events. But uh, there has been that happening. But isn't it wonderful that the love of God, in spite of COVID-19, in spite of chaos in our cities, in spite of people in this ditch telling everybody in that ditch, you're doing it wrong. And how many of you know about every 20 years, they all switch ditches? But as we have people finding reasons to disagree, finding reasons to be angry, finding reasons to have resentment and unforgiveness, isn't it wonderful that the love of God never changes? Never changes. Everybody look me in the eye. Every one of you here, here's the deal. I may not know you. I may not know your name. Some of you I do because I've been coming here 20 years and some of you like me have been here all that time. But I don't need to know you because God does. God knows you. He knows everything about you. Should we take a knee on that? <laughs> I mean, He knows the top secret stuff your mother don't know. The stuff she will never know. But He knows. And incredibly... It hasn't changed how He loves you. See, the love of God remains no matter what happens on the earth. And so I want you to keep your eye. How many of you know your compass needs a north? The northern star was what the mariners would use to cross the great ocean to come here. It's how America was founded. Is they had to come across that ocean and they used that northern star to navigate because it never changed. That's the love of God. It never changes. Everybody in this section over here, let me hear y'all say, it never changes. Y'all do better than that. I'm going to give you another run on three. One, two, three. I thought so. Let me hear the middle section on three. One, two, three. Let me hear y'all over there. It never changes. The love of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you make a mistake, if you get out of line... How many of you have ever got out of line with God? Come on, don't lie in church. How many of you have ever got out of line? Remember when you were a kid, when you were in elementary school and you were in line for, you know, uh, what they call it, during recess, you could go buy a push-up? Come on, y'all. I mean, you got to have some gray hair or no hair. How many of y'all remember push-ups? These kids are Googling it. What's a push-up? Yeah. But you know, and you had like a nickel or a dime. How many of a Coke was like a nickel or a dime? And you stand, and all of a sudden you were like, I left my money in my desk. And so you go back to get your money. When you come back, what them kids say to you? Go to the, you got out of line. Go to the back of the line. Let me tell you something. God, I'm using the word never here. He'll never tell you that. You know what He'll say to you when you get out? When you come back, He'll say, get in where you got out. I was holding your place for you. Just get back in where you got out. So if today if you found yourself through this week, through this month, through this year, a little bit out of line, just remember, God is always holding your place. And He said, get back in line. Say it again, it never changes. It never changes. So that's what I want to remind us about today. My name's Kim Clout. How many of you here have never heard me? I know a lot of you have. Anybody here who's never heard me, raise your hand. Okay, just a few of you. Um, Mira told you a little bit about me. I did grow up in church. My dad was a preacher. My dad preached 63 years in 115 countries. His dad, my grandfather, preached 78 years. Was married for 72 years to the same woman. Drop the mic. You know that's God. So I'm third generation full-time ministry. Uh, August will start my 42nd year of full-time ministry. So I'm halfway to roughly to where they've done. Uh, and we've been doing travel ministry for, in August for 32 years. So if you're wondering what does that mean, I'm in a different city and state every week. I have the unbelievable privilege to travel around and represent Him and to speak the love of God to people who want to hear. Put your hand up if you want to hear. Put your hand up kind of lean forward. I'm looking to see if you all have your hands. If you don't have your hands up, you're out of the Word of God. Put it up there like that. That's right. Here's what I want to talk about today. Freedom. Yesterday, our country celebrated a birthday, 244 years old. It sounds old until you start talking to the people in Europe. 
you know, France and Italy and Spain. I mean, they've been around thousands of years. We're an infant. Go to the Middle East, tens of thousands perhaps. Who, who could even say? We're 244 years. But America's a little different deal than a lot of those nations. And, I, you know, in spite of what you've heard and in spite of what's being taught in many of our schools today, America is unique and occupies a very unique place in the scope of humanity. Everybody look at me, because I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to say. America is the only nation on the planet that was founded on purpose for a purpose. Say that, on purpose for a purpose. You know, if you go to France and ask a Frenchman, when did France begin? Let's kind of look at you. You know, go to Spain and ask a Spaniard, when, when did y'all start? They feel like they've always been. But if you ask an American who's been taught the truth and you ask them, when did you begin? I hope you can tell them, July 4th, 1776. We began as a nation. Why did we begin then? What was the big deal about? Well, it's a simple word, freedom. Everybody say freedom. We wanted to be free. Now, did people at that time want to be free to dance naked? Are you all aware that that's under the, the deal of freedom of speech, that they have nude dancing in places? I'm, I'm not joking. Let me hear you say, imagine that. So is that why America was founded? Was America founded so people could burn the flag? And yet, people would tell you that's freedom. No. The real truth is, America was founded so that people could have a place to freely worship. Worship who? There was but one God. There is but one God. Now, if you listen today, people act like, well, you know, faith is a personal thing. Well, I agree it is. Well, and I, I, I don't like to tell people that they've got to just worship any God. Or, I just can't imagine there's only one way to God. And this is what happens when we get our eye off that northern star. When you get your eye off what of never changes. God's the only thing. Say the only thing. Only thing that never changes. Same yesterday, today, and forever. The love of God and the will of God and the standards of God, they're not anything you vote on. Let me hear you say, imagine that. And so America was founded so that people could have the liberty to worship. They had a daddy, so to speak, over there in England who said, you're my subjects. And they were a little uncomfortable with that. And he was the original Stretch Armstrong. He would stretch his arm all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and slip down into their pocket and take their money. And they said, that's my money. I worked with them. He said, oh, no, no, that's my money. He said, no, it's mine. No, he said, it's mine. In fact, he said, you're mine. You're my subjects. And they said, well, we didn't vote for you. And he looked at him incredulously and said, you don't vote for a king. And they said, well, then how did you become king? He said, my daddy said I was. Let me hear you say, imagine that. And so finally they said, I don't think so. We want to be free. You see, he wouldn't let him have a voice. He took their money. Wouldn't let, him vo- let him, wouldn't let him have a voice. Which gave rise to what famous phrase I hope you were taught? No taxation. Thank you, sir. You get 500 points for the bonus round. Don't celebrate too much. She's the one grinning because she knows they're actually her points. There you go. She said, that's God right there. You heard it. It's true. They said, we aren't going to have taxation without representation. We want a voice. And so long story short, they declared their independence and they wrote on July 4th this declaration. Anybody here read that declaration? I hope you have. I read it this week again. And one of the things I was captured by is the phrase where they say, we hold these truths to be self-evident. In other words, I don't need a pie chart to explain this. I'm not going to need the overheads to break this down. We believe this is pretty obvious that all men are what? Everybody say created equal. Have you noticed in America, everybody is big on equality? Well, we ought to be. Because God created us equal. Agree? But let's be real. When America was founded, was everybody equal? Was everybody free? No. We had people who were considered property. 
There ain't no freedom in that. And there's no equality in that. And that's why it took nearly 90 years, but we finally fought an incredible war. And who did we fight in 1861? Ourselves. Let me hear you say, imagine that. And why did we have that fight? So that everyone could be free and equal. But let me ask you, after the Civil War was over, in January 1st, in 1863, when the great emancipator, Abraham Lincoln, gave the Emancipation Proclamation, that was official, it was paper. He signed it. He's the president. But let's be real. Did that make everybody free and equal? I mean, fast forward 100 years and you got Rosa Parks saying, I'm tired of sitting in the back of the bus. I believe I'll sit here. As Ali once said, I shook up the world! She shook up the world when she did that. You had the civil rights movement and Dr. King and all of that. But let's be real. Did that make everybody free and equal? And this wasn't just a racial thing. How about a gender thing? Ladies, did you know that prior to the women's suffrage movement, you couldn't vote? Let me hear you ladies say, imagine that. I can't vote. Say it again. And so Susan B. Anthony and the women's suffrage movement got you ladies the right to vote. But let's be real. Did that make you free and equal? No. Because as recently as 30 or 40 years ago, you, a lady, could be standing next to him, a man, doing the exact same job, and he got paid more than you. Is that free or equal? No. And y'all said, that isn't fair. And so what did you do to resolve that? Y'all acting like you don't know. You burned your bras. Now, to be forthright with you, I don't know how you connect them dots, but that's what y'all came up with. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, this is what we need to do. Let us follow her lead. But here's the deal. We've had all of these things. We've fought wars. We've signed proclamations. We've had movements. We've raised signs. We've done all kinds of things so people can be free and equal. We're doing it now. But as any of what's happened in the past or what you've seen take place in our major cities the last month, let's be real. Has that made everybody free and equal? And it never will. Because a man can't make you free or equal. A movement can't make you free or equal. A proclamation can't make you free or equal. Let me tell you what can. What our founders acknowledged in the beginning. We hold this to be self-evident. We feel like this is pretty obvious that all men are... Isn't it something that everybody in America wants equal? They just don't want created. Oh, we all want equality. We're marching for equality. Equal. Equal rights, equal justice. Everybody wants equal. You don't hear much talk about people saying, because we all have the, great, the same Creator, do you? Everybody wants equal. Nobody wants created. But you can't have equal without created. See, that's what our 244-year history has proven. If you take God out of the equation... You can have movements, you can have marches, you can burn stuff, you can holler, you can have wars, you can do all kinds of stuff. You never will have equality because you only have equality if you have God. Say this to me, no equality without equal. Yeah, We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created. They could have stopped there. But thankfully they said created equal. Created equal. What does that mean? What does equal mean? Let's be real. You've known a lot of people in your life. Has your life experience taught you that, well, everybody's the same? Come on, don't act like you've got to be politically correct. No! You're entirely different than your brother and sister. Right? So the equal we're talking about here, it doesn't mean that everybody has the same gifts or everybody has the same talents, because clearly they don't. What he's saying is, everybody has access to my love. See, that's why you were created, was to have fellowship with God. 
You were created equal, all of you entitled. That's why the Scripture says, He didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world. I've actually heard some people who call themselves preachers saying, the COVID-19 is God's judgment on America. And I'm like, read the Bible, sucker. The Scripture says, He sent His Son into the world that none should perish. That's money, y'all. That none should perish, but that all could have everlasting life. Let me hear y'all say, that's what He said. So He came that we could all know His love. That we could all know His, yes, freedom. See, America's been big on freedom. From the beginning, we wanted to have freedom to worship. We had a war with ourselves so that all men could be free. Do you know that we've even fought for other people's freedom? I mean, you may say, I'm big on freedom if you fight for your own freedom. But how many of you know you are big on freedom if you're fighting so somebody else can be free? Check this out. If you're fighting for somebody, you don't even know to be free. But we did that in World War I. In World War II, we fought so that people we didn't even know could be free. That's a love for freedom. In the 50s, we fought in Korea because North Korea was trying to bring communism to South Korea. We said, I don't think so. We fought so that Korea could be free. And frankly, if we'd have finished the job, we wouldn't be dealing with that lunatic North Korea today. We'll let politics get in it. How about Vietnam? I mean, there are many people that got a problem with that war. But the fact is, we fought that war so that South Vietnam could be free from the communism of North Vietnam. In 1990, the first Gulf War, when Saddam Hussein entered into Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, we said, that isn't right. You don't just go into your neighbor's house and steal their stuff. Agreed? And so people, we didn't know. Men in this nation gave their lives. Women in this nation gave their lives so that people could be free. We're big on freedom. And I pray that's what you celebrated yesterday. I pray you got your eyes on the star and not on the news. How many know the news ain't going to tell you the truth? You know why? Because they don't know it. How many of you know you can't take somebody somewhere you've never been? You can't give somebody a drink of something you've never had. And so the news media today is not going to tell you the truth. If you want the truth, you need to follow the truth. Is the truth on the view? No. ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, any of them, can they give you the truth? No. There is but one truth. And he made it clear, he said, I'm the way as well. I'm the life as well. Man, have you ever seen a time where people are so interested to be alive? What what do I mean by that? I mean, we're doing whatever we can. Y'all are sitting apart from each other. Why? We want to live. Some of y'all wearing masks. I wear mine when my wife's around. (laughs) I get ready to go in somewhere. She goes, hey, come back, come back. What? She says, come back and get your mask. I said, just hand it to me. No, come back and get it. You need to get in the habit of wearing that mask. Why are we wearing masks? We want to live. We're washing our hands. Man, aren't you glad to know that? Man, that's the one thing I hope it'll come out of this. Now when you go shake your hands to somebody, you'll have to wonder, wonder where that hand's been. Now you know he's washed it. Amen? Man, we want to live. Why? Because how many of you understand this life that we have that our parents gave us, how many of you understand it's temporal? How many of you understand it's, it's uh, sensitive? How many of you understand it's vulnerable? I mean, you can get something you can't see, can't smell, can't feel, and it can kill you. And so you need to wash your hands. You need to social distance. Wear a mask. Do all that you can to preserve your life, because the only life you can have is the life your mom and dad gave you. And how many of you know the life your mom and dad gave you included death? That's what makes this COVID-19 so big, is that the life you have could cease, because how many of you know carnal life has a beginning and an end? The only life your parents could give you was the life their parents gave them. The only DNA your parents could give you was the parents, their parents gave them. So in other words, if you're tall, it's because your daddy was. Right? If your mama had blonde hair, you probably do. If your daddy has brown eyes, I bet you do. 
If your mama has green eyes, I bet you do. If your mama's real outgoing, you probably are. And if your daddy's ugly, you look like your mama, glory to God. Everybody tells you, you look just like your mama. Ha! Yeah. See, mom and dad could only give you the DNA their parents gave them that included green eyes and curly brown hair or whatever, but it also included death. And that's why what Jesus did is such a big deal. Because in John 10 and 10, He broke it down. Say, break it down. Say, it, break it down. He broke it down. He said, it's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy, i.e. COVID-19. But He said, I have come that you might have what? Zoe, the life of God. So your mom and dad gave you life, they couldn't give you Zoe. Everybody say Zoe. 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 It literally means the life of God. But if you've accepted Jesus into your heart, He said, though you die, you'll live forever. Let me also ask what He said. He said, you'll live and not die. You'll have everlasting life. And I'm going to tell you something, nobody in the news network today can give you that. No movement can give you that. No leader of any group can give you that. Say only Jesus. Only Jesus. He's the only place you'll find life everlasting. The only way. The only way. And that's what you need to understand today. Is the same God that invented life, invented equality, He invented freedom. So we're big on freedom. Everybody wants to be free. How many of y'all here grew up in the 60s? Some of y'all did. Don't have your hand up. But that's all right. I did. You know, in the 60s, man, we all wanted to be free. Didn't we? Even those of you who didn't grow up in the 60s, y'all had that inkling. I want to be free. How many of y'all couldn't wait to get out of your parents' house? It's okay, she can't see you. You can raise your hand. This one over here just raising her finger. Just... You know why I wanted to be out? So I could be free. Because I thought freedom meant having nobody to tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. I'm free. The man in the 60s, we took it to a whole other level. We were like, make love, not war. That's free right there, y'all. You're talking about making love, not war. Back we said, if loving you is wrong... Now, if I had been y'all, I would not have played it that way. I'd act like, I've never heard that before. What, what is the next phrase? I, not y'all committed, so that's all right. And we were doing all that because we wanted to be free. And so we celebrate freedom on July 4th. How do we celebrate freedom in America? Hard works! Let's blow something up. Y'all too? Y'all seen these people? Freedom! You know why they're doing that? Because they blew their other fingers off. Man, we shoot fireworks. What else do we do on the 4th of July? Cookout. Barbecue. Come on, y'all. Let me hear y'all say Q. How many of y'all here love barbecue? If you don't love barbecue, I'm going to have a healing line for y'all after service. Man, we're smoking some brisket. Where do we like to do it? How about the lake? Huh? At the beach. You see, that is the epitome of freedom in America. People think, man, if you're cooking a steak, if you're smoking some brisket, you're doing it out at the lake, you're shooting fireworks, you're drinking a light beer, you must be free. Y'all are going, did he say a light beer in church? I did. Because let's be real, that's what many Americans think freedom is. Right? I must be free. I'm doing all this stuff. I checked all the boxes. But let me ask you something. Does any of that make you free? Fact is, you could be drinking that light beer, smoking that brisket, shooting fireworks, doing it all the lake, and be in bondage. Much like I was. Thought I was free. Turned out I was in bondage. Didn't think I was. Until I was all the way down in a pit and couldn't get out. But thankfully, somebody came to me and acknowledged the obvious. You in the pit. And they said, but you know what? His love goes deeper than your pit. And then when I got to studying about freedom, 
I found out God is the one who invented freedom. So if you're watching Antifa, or you're watching all of these various groups that are out marching and saying stuff, or if you're watching the Republicans or the Democrats or the Independents or the people in this network or that network, they don't know anything about freedom. Because they didn't invent it. Only God invented freedom. And you may ask, well, when did He invent it? I thought you would never ask. In Genesis 2, brother, put that Scripture up for me. Everybody say the first thing. Put your hand up like this. How many of you have certain sounds that you love? Anybody, what's one of your favorite... Raise your hand, don't just holler it out. Raise your hand if you got a, something that's your favorite sound to hear. Like I'll give you my own. I like a guitar amp on 10. I like that sound. Anybody else, what sound? You, yes, ma'am. The ocean. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Your grandbaby's laughing. I like that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you just agreeing. Okay, all right, that's all right. Anybody else? How about this? How many of y'all like this sound? Any animal lovers here? Raise your hand if you love God. He created them. I love everything He made. You know what I love in my house? I love this sound. How many know what that is? That's them little four-leggers running around. How many, how many of y'all like the sound of bacon frying? Boy. I mean, on grandbabies, y'all are like... Eh. Guitar amps, huh? bacon. Oh yes, glory to God. I felt my baby jump within me when you said bacon frying. My baby leapt within me. Man, we all love the sound of bacon frying, don't we? You may think, I'm staying in bed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We all have sounds we love, but you know what? None of that is the first thing a human ear ever heard. A in this section say the first thing. Sound boot. The first thing a human ear ever heard was what we're going to look at right now. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are what? Right here is the origin of freedom. The first thing a human ear ever heard was not God stroking him and saying, you're the best one. I love you. Did she ever call you baby? I like how she laughed and he was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, check it out, of course. Look at him now and say, baby. Go ahead, look at him and say, baby, baby. If my wife starts a sense, baby, I get off, you know, I lose my balance a little bit, you know, she calls me a baby. I, she throws me off my game immediately. That isn't the first thing a human ear ever heard. Human ear didn't hear God saying, I love you. He wasn't handing out tiaras or participation trophies. Please. But he's breathing, give him a trophy. He sat in class, give him an A. First thing, say the first thing. First thing a human ear ever heard was, You are free. Now, what did he tell him he was free to do? Eat. Come on, y'all are church people. Come on now. <laughs> That's what some of y'all been thinking about all morning. Y'all thinking, how long is he going to go? If he doesn't hurry up, we're not going to make the catfish. All the shrimp will be gone if he don't hurry up. God told him, you're free to eat from what? Any tree. Any tree in the garden. Did you know that included the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? No, they were free. Now understand, God told him, of that tree you must not eat. For if you eat of it, you will surely what? But understand this, they were free to eat from it, which they proved. You see, here's the real purpose of freedom. Put your hand up here and lean forward so you get this. The real purpose purpose of freedom is choice. That is why and how God will judge everybody. You may have looked at people and said, you're not the judge of me. He is. And the reason He will and can is because He has given... Everybody look me in the eye. Everybody look me in the eye. 
as my eyes scan this room and I make eye contact with you, understand this, don't know you, don't know your story. God does. But here's what I do know about you. From the moment you were conceived, you have had choice. That is freedom. But you have freedom to choose. The Lord said it this way, you can choose life or you can choose death. You can choose blessings or you can choose curses. But he said, I've called heaven and earth as a witness. We're watching what you choose. And whatever you choose, that's what you'll have. That's freedom. So you see, freedom isn't a movement. It's a revolution! No, it's not. It's a movement! We're taking over the world! No, you're not. Freedom is one simple thing that only God can give. It's choice. And every day, say every day, you're either choosing life or death. Every day. How many of you know you can't call time out? Time! Time! I have my hand on base! Time out! No. Every moment of every day, you're choosing actively life or death. And I salute you that you're here this morning. This is the biggest steps you'll ever take towards life is when you come to the house of God. And you say, I'm here in spite of what I've seen in our cities, in spite of what I've heard on the news, in spite of the fear of Palooza, as I like to call it. I'm here to worship the one true God. The one and only who can give freedom. The one and only who can give equality. Because He's the one and only who created you. Amen? Bow your heads, close your eyes. The Lord told Adam and Eve that day, you're free to eat from any tree in the garden. He built a fence around the tree of the knowledge of good and evil with simple words, don't do it. See, and it's the other thing. We've been lied to. We've been told that fences hinder that fences limit. That fences are harsh and mean. That fences are oppressive. But the fact is, from the beginning, God built the first fence around the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and He said, don't eat of this, for if you eat of it, you'll surely die. You see, the love of God is such, He wants you to live, and He builds fences not to keep you out, not to keep you in, to keep you alive. That's why the Word of God is full of commandments. It's not there to keep you from having fun. It's there to keep you free. To keep you alive. 